Okay, NASAP podcast number two. This one's titled For the Love of Money. I'm mm. Mr. Leont. Today we have with me Jermaine, Wally, Jan, and Mr. Luke. Okay, Wally. so first question, a general one. Mm-hmm. Does money equal happiness? Um, a lot of people think, you know, if you have a Lamborghini, nice car, big house, diamond, pearl, mm. you're happy. Does money equal happiness? Is there a point that where you have more money, you stop being happy? What do we think? He wants to take it first. I mean, I think money doesn't equal happiness, but I'm sure like it contributes to someone being happy. I mean, I heard the quote like, uh, someone said I would rather cry in like my mansion than uh, on the streets if you're homeless. Okay. So yeah, I think. I think it depends from person to person. I think there's specific things that makes everybody happy. So mm. let's say you have a hobby. Uh, let's say your hobby is cricket. And to play cricket, you need money. You need to buy equipment. True. And you need money for that. But True. if you can't pay for all these things, then you can't really get happy. Yeah. But I think money lets you do things which makes you happy. Okay. Similar to my point. I also think that it's, uh, it's very dependent on your own perspective of life. Because if you're rich, if you're born to a rich family, I feel like you wouldn't have the same value for money compared to someone that was born poor and got the money that they had. It's true as well. Fair, fair. Mr. Luke? Well, Eminem said that, you know, Eminem. money doesn't buy happiness, it buys crazy happiness. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's what he said. No, no, no. Um, I, I think he was trying to make a joke on Letterman or something when he said that or whatever it was. But I think Jan's probably a bit right. Like, you know, it depends on where you're from. Like, you know, if you're living on the banks in like Tanzania, maybe somewhere where there's alligators and stuff like that. and you happen to win the lottery, like, you know, and you get like a million dollars all of a sudden, like you can move country and get your children educated better or something. It's like, you know, so in a, sen- in a sense, it does buy, it might buy so- some sort of happiness, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there some things that money can't buy? Oh. Good I think there, question. There definitely are things that money can't buy. Yeah? Please but, elaborate. I'm not going to. In your opinion, of course. Right. So money, well, one of the things we talk about first, I don't think money can buy happiness, but I think even other feelings, like I think once you have a, a lot of money, I think you're uh, almost desensitized to happiness or, mm. of, you know, you always, you experience joy all the mm. time. Yeah. And I think finding the joy in doing simple things gets reduced. True. But I think money can't buy happiness. Fully. Yeah. 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 Mm. I feel like some people would, uh, people with, uh, some people with money would confuse materialistic happiness over like an emotional one. Yeah. So like it kind of like Wally said, it desensitizes them from like that type of feeling. Yeah. There's also other. I think it's mainly feelings that money can't buy. True. So for yeah. example, money can't buy love. Like friends, you, you know. You, you don't think so? Yeah. Money can buy can't buy friends. Maybe no. online, but. Maybe. I, I maybe like maybe like false friends, like you know. Like yeah. Friends. I don't think you'd want those. Yeah, because I I remember listening to a there's an interview with like Matt McCon you know Matt Matthew McConaughey yeah. Like, yeah. Actually, like I remember there was an interview with him like maybe six months ago or something like that and he was saying the one in Rush that, Hour what's that is he the one in Rush Hour uh no that's Chris Tucker you got to be confused um on the Thursday before the weekend before the movie was made like showing on the cinemas and stuff like that. There was like 500 people on the beach and like 490 of them didn't know who he was. Mm. And then he said on the Monday when he went back to the beach, there was like 10 of them didn't know who he was. And 490 of them all knew who he was. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all of them wanted to be his friend. Like, you know, and, um, and then obviously when you're rich and famous, you've got so many people that want to be your friend. And sure. so it, but maybe it's like the, the false... Type of friends, the four yeah. summer friends, like yeah. you know, because like some of them, like you know, Brendan Fraser, do you know, Brendan Fraser, he was yeah. in that movie The Mummy, and all that. He Brandon sort of like fell out of Hollywood, mm-hmm. and then like, so, like all friends. his friends disappeared as well, like mm-hmm. you know, after he wasn't so famous, maybe. Okay, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, well, uh, I, I think money buys popularity, mm, true. Yeah. I don't know if you, I don't know if that's happiness, maybe for some people, that is happiness, some people just want the recognition, yeah. Do you feel that rich people can be sad? Yeah, yes. definitely. Anyone can be sad. Maybe uh, like the loss of a pet or anything yeah. can make them sad. Uh, I know what uh, one game developer himself 
he created a thing like a really popular game. Yeah. Uh, he got paid around two billion dollars for it. Wow. And he just kind of spiraled out of control. Like he, I I think it, it suits him best that the quote where he got too rich to the point that he got bored. He, mm. he got nothing. Yeah. You can you can do anything, but at the same time you feel nothing. Right. I think that's yeah. what I was saying before. They get, uh, they get an overflow of joy, yeah. and yeah. they get they get used to it almost. So I think finding joy when you're really rich becomes harder. Yeah. I think for like normal people, uh, taking your dog out for a walk brings joy. Yeah. But for for really successful people who've made a lot of money, I think it's harder to find joy in doing simple things. Yeah. It always has to be doing crazy stuff yeah. to get happiness and I think it becomes harder mm, yeah. look at yeah like Bezos had that what's that how big is that yacht that is 500 million yeah a huge. billion like I think it was a billion yeah huge yeah. and yeah he, like the Netherlands government took down a bridge for him or something to get it out to the ocean like you know but maybe when you're when you've got like 100 billion maybe you have to buy a billion dollar yacht to feel some happiness maybe yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but also I think it's, it's interesting like I think when you when you earn there's, there seems to be a line of money that you earn when all of a sudden, like even if your morals are in question, because you're rich, people will toler- still tolerate you. Like, you no, know, so like, Bezos might be a good example. I'd like, you no, know, I think we raised it a bit last week when we met. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of questions about his, like, his work ethics and yeah. how he treats people. And mm-hmm. it seems to be very public knowledge. Mm-hmm. Like, how, like, you know, before, right. but people will still tolerate Bezos, still invite him out to, like, the Oscars and still associate with him even though his morals are really in question or his character is in question like what do you think about that i think that's i think that's just a sign of a, a failed society in america or in a, yeah. a capital society yeah. where you have somebody who's exploited a bunch of poor people to get rich mm. and now that he is rich now people are finding excuses for him so you know people are capitalists and especially republicans they're finding excuses to make to make it okay for people to do that, they mm. pretty much want more people to do that. They think it's the it's the only way a society can function where people have to exploit others to, to go up. Yeah, and yeah. What else do you think about that? Sorry. What do you think about that as well, you two? Um, I think it's like a privilege. The if you're very rich, you know, people don't want to get on your bad side. They don't want to say anything that like opposes your views mm. so they just try to stay out of trouble so as a result they like follow what you say yeah yeah, yeah. do you believe that hard people people who work hard sorry <laughs> get rewarded financially uh, do you think in general do you think in life generally the people who work the hardest get paid the most no uh, i don't think that the people who work the hardest get paid the most mm. i think okay. i mean you can Generally speaking, just yeah. thinking, people who work the hardest I think get paid people who work the hardest are manual labor. So, yeah. for example, in Qatar, people who help build the stadiums and everything, I think those people are the people who work the hardest. But uh, let's say we have a company like, let's say Amazon. Yeah. Jeff Bezos earns the most on Amazon. But the hardest working people are the people who spend 12 hours a day in the factory, factories where the working conditions are, are not very good. And they spend 12 hours in this environment of, uh, and they and they earn minimum wage. Mm. They earn pretty much nothing. So I think mm. I think those are the hardest working people, but they don't they don't get paid what they're what they deserve because somebody else An somebody else thinks they deserve that money. Yeah. Do you think there's a do you think that there's a threshold somewhere where <clears throat> like earning money to a particular point is okay and then when you cross a threshold like somehow money corrupts. Like, you know, that's like what do you think about that? Like, like is it a million dollars like after you start earning two million dollars a year you start being corrupted like you're a bit of a corrupted person or a bad person or do you think it's maybe it's, maybe it's 20 million dollars in a year or I don't think uh, there's certainly a limit for certain it depends on the person itself but it mm. limits itself with the amount of money they earn but there you can still be a billionaire but how about would other be people? humble yeah yeah, yeah it depends on the person's character yeah. yeah, it's very dependent yeah. on it. It, it. is. It is very dependent, but I don't think the way society functions right now, you can be a billionaire and be good or, or ha- have come up through... Uh, you can't uh, be a nice person. Uh, yeah, you can't really yeah. be a nice person to be a billionaire. So I think, personally, I don't think there should be billionaires. I don't think billionaires should exist. Yeah. I think... You get to 999 million, 999,000, yeah. and then yeah. you just stop. Yeah. Right. 
No, I, don't, I don't think there's a, there's a certain limit where you, you, should, you, should, you shouldn't be able to earn more than that. But mm-hmm. I think I think when you look at America, well, I keep on going back to America, but it's, mm-hmm. it's an easy example. When you have somebody who's worth $100 billion, yeah. and then you still have people who don't who are homeless, who don't have enough money to pay for health care, mm-hmm. in a country where health care is not free, mm-hmm. you know, where not everybody gets a basic human right, and you mm-hmm. still have people who have buying $1 billion yachts. Yeah. And I think that, to me, that just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that fault of the like of a governmental process though, or do you think it's I some it. some is that is that the billionaire's fault? I feel like it's a mix of both. Yeah, I think I think it is it is a uh, it it's is tied together. I yeah. think it it's yeah. tied. I think it is the government's fault, but I think it's the billionaire who eventually takes advantage of it. Mm. So he takes advantage of this the the government's fault. Mm. Yeah, and in doing so, he's exploited so many people. Yeah. Try and find loopholes between them. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, like I think it's what, it's like trust. Trust is the British. Let's person. trust. Yeah, she's up. Yeah. yeah, I think like she's. I think she. I don't know well enough, but I think by the sounds of it, like the tax, she made tax cuts. Yeah. For just yeah. the rich people. Just yeah. I think I think yeah. it's the richest people who always find loopholes in government mm. policies as well. So like mm. tax, rich people do not get taxed enough, in my opinion. Yeah. So I think. The poor people are obviously more affected by tax, but I think if I think rich people should obviously be taxed more. Should be taxed more. Yeah, should be taxed more. And sure. I think, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's always the rich people who have access to, to uh, who have access to so much, so many funds that they can influence government policy. Yeah, I also think that like you know, they have ac- <clears throat> they have access to way more information than we what we have like you know Definitely. like mm. yeah, just to bring it back to like Matt McConaughey even like he said when he when he obviously when he got famous and he started earning lots of money, he said all of a sudden like all these doors opened to him that he had no idea existed like you know the information come flowing through like you know if you want to save you know twenty million dollars of your year right. like of your yeah. yearly wage well we can just do this right. and, we'll, and we'll figure it out but the average citizen like us yeah <clears throat> like. I don't, I've got no idea. Like, I, I don't really know mm. much about stocks or, mm. like, yeah. you know, like, Madged from a couple, do you remember Madged from a couple of years ago? Or Madged, maybe yeah. Maybe Maine? Yeah. Like, um, like, Noel, like, these guys are doing, like, um, you know, cryptocurrency. Like, yeah. A lot of cryptos yeah. and stuff like that. And then, like, the, what's the picture one again? Like, you know, NFTs. Oh, like NFTs. NFTs as well. Yeah. Like, Noel was really big on NFTs. Like, I've got no idea. Like, you know, I know it's, like, it's a very yeah. volatile market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, I think even like Logan Paul was buying some, some like yeah, a lot of big names, like two million dollars yeah. or something. A lot like. of big names uh, start buying cryptocurrency yeah. NFTs. And and normally when you see things like these, where you know you see an opportunity to get rich, so you know for example, cryptocurrency almost gave poor people the hope. Well, we can do this, and we can go from here to being where the billionaires are. At. But I think it, ultimately it's just the rich people getting richer, mm-hmm. and the poor people staying where they are. Uh, okay, yeah, well, let yeah. me ask you a question then, uh, because uh, I'm guessing, myself included, our parents weren't born in Qatar. Were your parents born in Qatar? No, no, no. no. Okay, so uh, our parents, or well, your parents came to Qatar, my parents came to England mm-hmm. in the hope of, I uh, guess, a better job mm-hmm. and making more money yeah. so that us as their children mm-hmm. would have a better life than they did. Don't you feel that money can be used as an inspirational tool to Definitely. motivate those to come from other countries to make something better of themselves? because of the reward of money. If asked to be devil's advocate, don't think that's a good thing? Like the American dream. Right. You go yeah, to America, yeah, it's yeah. like the American dream. Right. You work hard, you get rich, you can be the next right. billionaire if mm-hmm. you work hard. Do, do you think that's feasible in reality? Or do you think that is just what it says, a dream? I think... And, is there so, and are there some good aspects of having that dream to encourage hard work? I think there's... There's an aspect of truth of it, truth of it. So you can go to these other countries where they they, ad, they advertise better jobs, um, better living conditions. So you can, I think, you can hundred percent use that uh, as a tool for inspiration to get other countries. But I think the countries who are advertising that are trying to gain advantage themselves. So they're trying to get these workers because they don't have the workers themselves. Mm. And I think in the end, it's them who keep benefiting the most. So I'll give you an example in the UK, the Windrush generation. Mm. So the people came from the Caribbean to work, and now they can't. They're telling them to get out. Mm. So I think they came there to help the country in the hopes for better money, but in the end, it's the it's the UK who's benefited Benefit, more, yeah. and they're being told to get out. Yeah, I think it is possible, like an American dream, but there's definitely like an element of luck inside. You know, it's not 
everyone who comes there can be successful. Most of them, like what he said, just works like minimum wage, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Another thing. <laughs> what do you think is the best way for a poor person mm-hmm. to get rich? And we're not talking about criminal means. We don't endorse criminality. But in terms of legally, what's the best way for a poor person to get rich? I, mean, I think it depends. If you, if you talk about a group, like it's, like you know, if you talk about let's say um, the poor class, the poor classes of like say, um, I'd say like sub-Saharan Africa, maybe or something. Like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if if you generalize, uh, if you generalize, it, I think as a as a huge, large group, I would say to get richer in some senses like energy or like the way countries use energy would be the way to, mm-hmm. to I think that's probably the starting point like you know so you know do they have heating do they have like healthcare mm-hmm. like you know and how that like you know like it, when I was in Kenya they, they still use like burning fire like mm-hmm. yeah, sorry not burning fire but using fire as their source of energy yeah. Yeah. whereas we have some countries like nuclear energy maybe or like coal or something like yeah. Australia is still big on coal, you know, um, and then you know, so certainly making people richer um, through energy like this, because then you don't have to buy, it, spend money on firewood or spend money on, you know, hot water or something like this. But then, it, as an individual person, like you know, someone from the Caribbean maybe coming to America, how that individual gets richer, like I'm not exact. I. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think actually like, you know, about that, but... I know in England, for a lot of uh, poor people, the two main ways out are either education, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. traditionally um, ethnic minorities push children to be doctors right. or engineer, yeah. or football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, you, if you have, if you're yeah. lucky talented. enough to be a very talented footballer, right. not just talented, very, 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 I think the chance to become a premiership player are 0.016% mm. to make it top of the league. Yeah. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to make it that far without being injured. So mm-hmm. sports and education are the two main ways out in mm-hmm. England. Right. What about from experience, you guys? Do you guys know any other ways a poor person could transcend and make it big? I think no. no I think for me, the same thing. The education or yeah, education. I think yeah. both those things are, are the, the people adding something to society. So especially engineers and doctors, I think you have to think of what, where your interests are in and, it, and you have to think how can it contribute to society. Yeah. So if you're interested, if you really like maths at school or and physics and stuff, you know how can it contribute to society by being an engineer? Yeah. So I think there's obviously other ways to get richer, which are you know not so more uh, not so ethical. But I think if you, if you want to get if you want to get richer ethically, I think you have to think about how can it contribute to society, and as a return, I will get paid for it. Mm-hmm. I think in, in some ways, I think like those who are billionaires maybe teaching kids like the wrong sort of methods like they seem to have all yeah, been yeah. gotten rich like it um Get rich through facts. like corrupt means right. or like mm-hmm. you know misguided means like yeah. you know to be a billionaire you've got like you know with elon musk for example like i didn't really realize this but a few months ago my friend was telling me like obviously he owned paypal right. yeah like he started that and then you know to get super rich when he's something to do with when he sold it like you know a lot of people lost all their money mm-hmm. and then the terms and agreements before that was like you know if your money is lost we still take a fee or something like this so, like, oh, wow. they, don't, they didn't return us or something like this so like, Elon Musk it seems like in the beginning was quite corrupt maybe yeah I think Elon Musk also him. more recently in the where all the cryptocurrency was getting more and more popular he created these proxy schemes so where he'd tell people so he's a billionaire he's yeah. worth like 100 billion and he's selling he's tweeting people to invest in certain coins or cryptocurrencies yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. obviously the That's poor the people are yeah. going to see that and be like oh I have to invest in this invest in this and as yeah. soon as the people start investing he sells the, so, oh it's like with Dogecoin yeah with Dogecoin yeah that was yeah. a big one and I, I I wasn't sure about what your thoughts were but like you know to bring it back to that, that point how like you know sometimes like poor people can get rich through like banding together maybe like in, through the cri- cryptocurrency scheme you know like that GameStop um, oh, yeah, like yes. when they all banded yeah. together on like Reddit and they said like let's, let's basically work as a huge group to like inflate the stock and they got rich off it and then obviously Wall Street yeah. turned around and just said look, look a lot of people lost out on billions on that and they've just put a stop to that like you know if there's an unusual buying of a stock that's not yeah. that good yeah. 
they just cut it off and like that's that's it like you can't buy any more of it or something yeah. so it seemed like you know people like the average person had found an avenue into getting rich which was not the the orthodox way in banking and just cut and them so off they controlled that and then that was it yeah, and yeah it's, it's just the rich right. trying to the, the rich yeah. getting richer and the poor and the poor, poor yeah. Yeah. yeah I think obviously those people who who run the stock market and like the Wall Street now, they have to make sure that the economy doesn't collapse again so like it did in the Wall Street crash mm. so they have to they have to regulate obviously the GameStop uh, the, the, what happened with Game, GameStop was people lost billions of dollars Mm. But the people who lost the billions of dollars were already billionaires. Yeah. And so it was the opposite where the rich got a bit poorer and the poor got a bit of money and they put a stop to it. Yeah. But where it's an opposite of that which happens every day, mm. nobody's gonna nobody's gonna nobody put a stop. Nobody, nobody, nobody cares about that. Yeah. And even even some of the poor the poorer people who are, you know, who want to get to the level of the billionaires, they're almost fed these lies that this is the way it should be, you should work yeah. hard, yeah. You should when it's so clear that uh, it's unequal. The system is it's not it's fair. fair. Yeah. It's not an equal uh, it's it's system. system. Yeah. It's, it's a system that's developed to make the rich stay rich. Right. Mm. I mean if you look at President Biden even like, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out now like of him and his son and how much how much actual involvement they have in the Chinese government, how they got rich through like shady deals, like, you know, if you accept our contracts, like we'll give you an extra two or three million dollars, you know, um, for construction or whatever it might right. be. Like so, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like. But even Donald yeah. Trump was a billionaire. Yeah. And now there's this case of him, actually getting the not paying for the Trump Tower. So yeah, yeah. The, yeah. He didn't pay so for the Trump Tower. And common. he's yeah. just gotten all these poor people to build the building, and they've ended up with nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, do you think do you think we should make probably more as a society? advertise that you know good ethics and right. good moral character is is what we actually should be is rich like not just a financial statement in your bank basically like right. should we advertise more of that um because other people might argue a bit differently like you know with lots of money you can do lots of different things with lots of money like you know you know bill gates is trying to do something to do with cancer right like he's, yeah he's, he's doing his uh, money gates foundation yeah yeah so, I think yeah. I think when it comes to that we can talk about how socialism compares to capitalism mm -hmm. so what socialism promotes is almost the, the idea that a normal person who contributes to society and lives a happy life and has all his human uh, basic needs are met mm -hmm. I think he can be happy he doesn't have to go I need to be a billionaire to be bi earn more yeah. and more so I think if we promote that you know that's the idea of happiness I think that's going to be better than promoting that, you know, you have to be on top of the world. Let me ask you a question then. Um, I believe, quote me if I'm wrong, um, mm -hmm. Scandinavia, but I believe Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, you get free university, right. yeah. you get a four year paternity leave for the father, right. mm -hmm. four year maternity leave, you get some of the best school in the world, mm -hmm. uh, but you pay 70% tax, right. somewhere yeah. around yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I think Is that worth it, 70%? So if you're working more than the average Joe on the street and you're excellent. I think you have to, so if you are a billionaire and you have to pay, let's say, or let's say you're a millionaire in Sweden and yeah. you're told you have to pay 70% tax. You might think that you're ending up with less money, but you have to think there's poor people who didn't have the same opportunities as you. It's it's not it's not fair that you take all the money and they end up, end up with nothing. So I think it's a way of contributing back to society because I don't think millionaires work as hard as normal people. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it depends what you call hard work. Like right. you said, the bricklayers work hard. Right. Yeah. Compared to a stock market on Wall Street, who yeah. works harder? It's a different kind of hard, right. isn't it's it? A, it's yeah. a different. It's a different kind of work. You have to think that the opportunities that the bricklayer got is not the same as the opportunities that you got. You know, you might grow up with uh, some money, you might go to good school. But the bricklayer didn't have those opportunities. So if you if you don't if you don't agree to the seventy percent tax, then the bricklayer is going to get nothing. You know, mm -hmm. he's not going to be able to pay for his his medical me, me, his his medicine, his his children to go to school. And it's just gonna create a, a system where the, the poor never never get to rise. Mm. Are there any benefits of being poor? Does it, does it give you a certain like? Does it give you a certain hunger or desire yeah. that you might not have if you're brought up rich? I know where I'm from in London. It's a very immigrant-heavy place. Yeah. All the doctors and lawyers are second-generation immigrants, and a lot of the friends that I went to school with are now doctors and lawyers because their parents came from. I friends up from Albania, 
war-torn countries and they worked hard to make sure that their children would do better than they did. It's a very immigrant, poor mentality and how they've grown up and they're flourishing. Do you feel like that's a benefit if you're an immigrant, that you might have that, that certain yeah. children of rich might not be have? Like a, if, uh, if you're poor, it teaches you the values of money. So, mm. so like, uh, if you're poor, compared, like a, I'd say a poor person, uh, like I said before earlier, a poor person would value money way more than like a rich. Yeah. So uh, they they would uh, uh, they would try and uh, spend their money as wise as they could. Yeah, I think it's a mindset. Like yeah. if you grow up poor, I think like you said, there's a, a hunger to not just be richer but to always be better, and so it could carry you further in life. Maybe you can find more happiness while excelling in many yeah. many activities. Also, because poor people, so especially immigrants in uh, in like the UK, for example, the the immigrants, you know, they might be let's say they're taxi drivers or working for the NHS or anything. Yeah. They might they they don't know education. They haven't been to university. They don't know any other way out but education. So they're they're always telling their children, you have to study, you so have to be an now. engineer, mm-hmm. you have to become a doctor. That's why you see in the UK where the highest achieving students are, are statistically. Indian immigrant yeah, children true. or Chinese immigrants yeah, children. They, they do amazing. So I think that's that's the reason why I think it's because you're always told by your parents that's the only way out. It's the only way to escape where they're, they're currently at. Yeah. Is, there, is that too much pressure? Uh, I mean, you generally, I think. <laughs> I think obviously it's more pressure than what a, a rich, rich person's yeah. child would face. <laughs> yeah. mm. I think we're. <clears throat> and also because let's say as a child of a rich person they have a lot more options you know, they can think about you know, what their interests are yeah. where their interests lie yeah. and they have more they have more time to think they have less things to worry about so mm. just, I think it is too much pressure for just sure. being dealt out of the quickly mm-hmm. um, is there a case that if you give a poor person if they win the lottery mm-hmm. and they have 10 million is there a case that they might they might be able to deal with that amount of wealth because they've always mm-hmm. been poor and yeah, therefore it could be damaging yeah. to them so if you get money so quickly right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that you may not know what to do with it. Yeah. The yeah. cases in the UK whereby people won the lottery and it's ruined their life and they've come out and said, it's the worst thing happened to me. Because yeah. I, I was not ready, I wasn't well equipped for that amount of money. I think there is. Uh, yeah. oh, no, or what I think I, Oh, please, no. I know uh, a few lottery winners in the Philippines that have won millions of uh, like dollars or pounds. Yeah. And uh, they didn't know how to handle it properly. So all they really did was spend and spend until yeah. they ended up Bank back to where they were. Yeah. And I think you, you actually end up, so let's say you do get $10 million right now. Yeah, okay. You don't know how tax, work, how tax with this much money works. You don't know how, you know, having a financial advisor is like, you don't know how, so rich people know how to deal with money. Like Mr. Luke was saying before, mm. they have so much, they have so much more access to information. Mm. So if you're suddenly given 10 million, you you don't know you don't know what to do so you end up going on you end up spending money on materialistic opportunities or whatever because you're not exposed to that kind of education mm-hmm. of what to do with your money. Mm. I, think I think there's like a, I used to know a guy like I'm not friends with him anymore like it's just been too long like I haven't spoken to him for too long but he um his dad had started a business like with hospitals something about something about like regulating gas bottles or something like this like and he was just the only one in Melbourne that was doing it so he, he got quite wealthy off it I think he had a few million dollars in the bank and his parents so he was actually very like his parents were quite wealthy as well like at one point his parents were thinking about buying a helicopter or something to get around because they didn't like driving anymore I was like that's so mm. ridiculous like <laughs> but um so but he grew up with a lot of money it seems around him and he was very very tight with his money like he just that's you know he he would check the prices of things and if one you buy the cheaper brand because it had more value in it or something like that. Yeah. He was super tight with his with his cash. But his son, like the guy that I knew, his son was um because he grew up with that wealth and his dad never really gave him much of it, he always tried to take advantage of it and spend a bit more and mm-hmm. whereas I was a bit different, like we sort of just came from an average home. Um like mum's obviously worked for like fifteen years at a job so now she's in a place where she's earning quite a bit. But I remember after university, I was just poor throughout university. And then when I got my first paycheck from like doing my first like major job, like it was just more money that I'd ever had in my bank account. I was just like, man, I'm just gonna spend it like, you know, 400, mm. you know, 
fifteen hundred real glasses, no problems. Like you know, I'm gonna take it. Like you know, like <laughs> you know, you know, eight hundred reals for perfume, like no problems. Like I'm gonna do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's cause just urgent. You don't know how to handle too much money, and yet I think I feel like you know, if you don't grow up, with, if you don't grow up with a certain amount of money and respect for it, you just right. you don't know how to handle it. You just end up spending. I think that's another way how society makes sure that the rich are rich and the poor keep, keep stay, stay poor, is that the access to information is, is very low for work. So they don't teach in, in school how to handle the money yeah. when we get older, you know. Yeah. So I think, and, and the rich people obviously have access to all the information. So I think uh, just giving somebody $10 million is not, it's not going to help them. It's actually going to destroy their lives, like I mentioned. Mm. I think mm. it obviously has to be a, a, a gradual growth in, in how society can shift from, you know, 1% being rich to, you know, everybody having at least basic human needs like medical, medical, hair, medical care and water. Mm. I think in Canada they have business maps. It's a much good business, business maps, you know, about mm. interest rates and mm. mortgage repayment and mm. taxes and you figure out how to do that stuff and it's a module that you have to pass. Yeah. By eighteen in the English curriculum, you don't have that. Mm. No, like in Australia, we have um, like I think we call it like practical maths. So it's like just maths to do with your life. So it's when you go to the bank yeah. account. Yeah. Like when you open a bank account, this is what you should. These are the questions you should ask for. These are how the interest rates work. Yeah. Like when you get your first pay shape, maybe you should invest in these areas. Like here's some terms that banks use and stuff like this and business and stuff. So we we sort of learn a bit bit about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's never really like it. Even like today, when you look on like Instagram and stuff like that, it's just it's always it's always full of like kids trying really try to wear design clothes right. and yeah. you know this this somehow brings you happiness or this is like you know you sort of peak up type of thing like you're advertising right. to other people this is this is what I am like but then like I've read some sort of study like say that you know a lot of young kids are spending like their five thousand reals a day just to get some Instagram pictures yeah. whilst like renting a Lamborghini or something for the day like this is, yeah. you know or the Russians who are spending, you know, twelve hundred real photo shoots on a fake private jet just to get the just to get the photos to so look like it, yeah. yeah. And so I think the message constantly coming in is that somehow having lots of money yeah. is Makes providing a better life, yeah. like you know. And it, actually, the message coming is that if you have more money, you're a better person, or like you're, yeah, you're, yeah somehow you are valued yeah. like in society more than the average than person than the average person right you know I think people think that the amount of money you earn uh, is it's the be. same as the amount of value you add to society yeah. so I think the more you earn the better you are doing to helping society already yeah but I think I, I don't think it is that way so you know somebody who like you mentioned the person who whose food was stolen or whatever yeah they think because they're earning more than this person, they deserve that, or they, yeah. they deserve their they're better. They're better yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many people like that. I would say. All right, want to end there? Yeah, I think. We've, yeah, it's fine. Appreciate fun. all you gentlemen for your views mm. of awesome episode. Thank you to everyone for listening, and we'll speak to you again soon. Take care.